Hello people of YouTube, it's Harv here from Progressive Recording and what I've got today for you is kind of a follow-on from um, the last video that we did where we looked at um, the plugins that you would use on your mix bus for kind of a chilled out dancey dubstep track um, and this time around we've actually got um, kind of a rocky track so um, it's a bit more simple, there's not quite so much going on. Um, let me disengage everything and show you the track and see so you can see what, how it sounds without. There we go. So it's kind of a throwback, rocky kind of thing. So let me show you what we've got going on. So first of all, as before, we have the brilliant Slate Digital Virtual Mix Bus. Now, for this song, I've got it set at, set at the Brit N setting, which is the Neve setting, um, which is known to give it kind of a, a, a low mid bump and kind of warmth. So really really like that so that's what I've decided and I've used a bit more drive uh, than last time um, I, I pretty much use this on every single mix you know with varying degrees of uh, saturation uh, drive but yeah it sounded good for this one I was it was between this one or the USA a which is the uh, sort of API kind of sound um, in fact um, I'll, I'll Let's turn the drive up. It's currently on three. I'll turn it up to six, um, and I'll, I'll flick between them, and so you can see if you can uh, see any difference. Here we are. I imagine that would have been reasonably difficult to hear. Um, perhaps if you've got very good headphones or studio monitors, it, it might come through. Um, I, I, I certainly think I can hear a difference with the Neve. Um, sort of the, the bottoms seem to kind of uh, fill out a little bit more. So that's that. We've got that one straight away. And then, um, as before, I've got my nice uh, Logic Lin EQ, Linear EQ. Um, now... I didn't I didn't really touch on this much before but um my general rule is cut before compression and boost frequencies after that's the general rule um that's basically what I've done with here I've used the same technique as before so I've cut um any any frequencies below 22 and a half I don't know why to it's anywhere around there wherever it sounds right um, I cut below there because the human ear can't really hear it. Um, I've also I, I kind of swept around and found a, a kind of tubby sounding frequency here at 62 hertz. W with this kind of genre, it's not it's not a particularly important frequency in my opinion. Um, that 62 is is fairly kind of sort of subby, um, and this track is the the importance I think is in the mid range. So. Um, I kicked it in, so let's hear it. Um, I might. Uh, what I'll do, I'll I'll boost this 62 hertz so you can hear what what's actually going on there. So here we go. So it, it just kind of felt like it was getting in the way a little bit. So that was it roughly round two I had it. Um, not not great, not you know, huge amounts of cutting there. Um, and I always think it's good, it's good to cut small amounts, probably no more than maybe th three decibels and you know keep keep it at a, key, a high cue. So very kind of narrow um, cut there. Um, that's that's another really good rule of thumb for EQing is um, is have a have a, a high cue or sort of narrow bandwidth for cutting 
and have a low Q or wide bandwidth for boosting. Now I would normally boost after my bus compressor um, but this for some reason sounded really good so it's just a very gentle boost around well actually I've got two boosts I've got one is I mean not even one decibel at um, 1300 Hertz and also a, a very slight boost at sort of 3500 um, and that that's it's a very wide kind of boost so it's really boosting from almost up to 10k down to all the way down here to kind of six six seven hundred um, and that's adding you know just a bit more of that kind of grit the mid-range that we were after with this kind of song um, so that's my linear EQ it's also it's very it's a it's another video entirely but it's important I think to use if you're going to use an, an EQ on your bus compressor I think this this kind of style you know a linear linear phase EQ is the one to go for Otherwise, you can you can introduce um, sort of phase uh, phase problems and and that kind of thing. So um, it's the best thing to do, I think. I've then got the absolutely amazing VBC rack from Slate again, which I, I love. It's just the the best um, the best plugin mix uh, mix bus uh, compressors that I've I've heard. So I'll um, I'll play and I'll kick them in for you to hear. To give you an idea of what's going on here, um, so I'm using the rack, the rack version of this plugin, which is all three of the compressors. So we've got the FG Grey, the FG Red, and the FG Mu. Um, I've actually got two of them engaged, which you know, there's that's fine. It's kind of a, it's a one way you can do it. Um, so my FG Grey is doing is doing the compressing. My FG Mu is bringing a little bit of vibe to it. Um, I might. I'll, I'll actually. Sh I'll show you um, what this is doing. But it, it's amazing. Just having it on. Um, I've got the threshold really low, so it's not even. It's not even compressing a, a single bit. But just having it on seems, to me anyway, to add some sort of extra harmonic content, which is really nice. Um, on my FG Grey, I am. I've got a very slow attack, so that my transients aren't completely squashed. Uh, I've got an auto release, which is is really really good on these uh, on these plugins. Uh, my threshold is reasonably low because that's that's uh, where it's just just clipping the, the very just the peaks and um, fairly low ratio at one and a half. Um, it's still taking off. I mean during this this solo section, it's still taking off just over a, a decibel, which um, it is the loudest part of the song. So that's the maximum that it'll be taking off. Um, in all other parts, it's, it's knocking off up to a dB, so really not very much. Um, I'm using the high pass filter up to 120 hertz, so it shouldn't affect anything below 120. Um, and I'm just I've got a tiny bit of makeup gain just to bring the volume back. Um, and I'm actually I'm actually mixing 100%, which I don't normally do. So, um, uh, but it sounded good to me. So that's uh, that's what I've done there. So. Let me, um, I'll show you this, uh, the Moo, the effect the Moo has, so I'll turn it off and then uh, you can hear the extra harmonic content it adds. Here we go. Okay, it, it's not even subtle at all. It's um, it's a pretty noticeable mid, uh, high mid bump, uh, which sounds great to me. Especially the guitars. That's that's the really noticeable instrument. Um, and then last but not least on my mix bus is the equally amazing Slate Digital Virtual Tape, tape Machine, which um, again sounds fantastic to me. Um, it's it's worth kind of reading up on what a tape machine does 
to the sound before you start you know before maybe before you purchase it even um because things like the the ips the inches per second which is how fast the the reels travel virtually um this this makes a, a huge difference to the sound um 15 generally gives you um it it will round off a little bit more of the the top end um i the 30 tends to be more uh, precise and more clear so i've got it on this one because i i don't, I don't want to lose the uh, kind of sheen of the cymbals and kind of top end grit of the guitars um and i've actually i've i've turned the input up a little bit so it should be saturating a little bit what what i don't want to do is have this all the way up here and have the the red lights on cuz it, 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 I, I think this is not the track to, to be doing that. Um, also, I've got this set to two track because it's it's on my master fader. So I just do that. Um, these here, the tape type, um, to be really honest, I, I don't, I'm not sure I really know the difference of this, how they sound. I just flick back and forth and see which one sounds best. And um, it's this is a very subtle dial. So um, I just play with it and see what happens so um, I'll, I'll kick it in and see uh, and see how it sounds I love that program. I love that plugin so much. So I don't know how well that came across on YouTube, but uh, to me that it it's, it's just sounds lovely. It sounds slightly more saturated, slightly fatter, and also it adds more of the uh, the kind of upper harmonic content as well. Um, so that is my mix bus for a kind of classic rock song. Very simple again, and uh, again, none of this, none of this is uh, kind of groundbreaking. It's just what I do. You can add things like um, I, I like to add the the pull tech EQ sometimes if it really needs, you know, a bit of sheen. That uh, that's great for that kind of sound. Um, and I would put it after if I'm boosting. I would put it after the uh, the VBC rack as well. Um, but generally, this is the order I go for um, virtual tape machine. Tape machine. I tend to put last. I treat it as if it was. Um, all being mastered onto tape, um, so so that's that. This is a this is a you know simple. I've 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 been known to put a lot more on here, but this is uh, working for this track, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Harv here at Progressive Recording. Take care. <laughs>